Welcome to track number 15 of How to Survive in Ephesus. 1 Timothy chapter 2 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen? For kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Amen. What are the what kind of life are you going to lead in Sydney? What are the four characteristics of part two of your life? Quiet, godly, honesty. Is it a good idea? How many are glad that dishonesty is over? Huh? How many have been dishonest? But are you glad that chapter 2 is coming? Honesty. Amen. Come on. What do you think? Are you glad? Paul. Are you glad? Very good. <laughs> we will have all men. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Verse 7. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice, it says in verse 7, Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth and I lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Amen. Listen, God is on, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you once again. We ask you to lead us, Lord, today in the name of Jesus. Amen. You notice that Paul said that I, I have been ordained as a teacher of the Gentiles. Now, almost all the time, with every calling, you see, you cannot be called to the whole world. Amen. You cannot go everywhere. You cannot speak to everyone. Even if you wanted to speak to everyone, you wouldn't be able to. If you try, let's say everybody says, I will listen to you. You get it. You can't speak to everyone. Let's say everybody says, well, I like you. I believe in you. I want to hear you. By the time you finish speaking to everyone, you'll be dead. Or before you finish. So, God usually divides the call into sections. And if everybody does his part, then everybody gets attended to. Now Paul says that I have been called to teach, uh, teach the Gentiles. Amen. A teacher of the Gentiles. So you will find out that usually God raises up people to be a blessing to some people. You can't be a blessing to everybody. So if you take for instance in Sydney, you have Brian Houston, you get it? Who is he a blessing to? Mostly. Young Australians. Yeah. What kind of Australians? Mixed. Mixture. What's the mixture? Mixture of what? White Australians. Anglo-Saxons Mostly Is it mostly white? Is it mostly white people? Yeah So usually by observing that You will find out that You get it 
you, you become a blessing to some particular groups of people. Amen. Yes. Now, that should not make you worried. Amen. Because yes. not everybody would like to be with you. Amen. Yes. So, those of us here in Lighthouse, you see, as you can see, Lighthouse originally, we were just a Ghanaian church. That's where it started. But now, we are becoming an international church. Even in the international, it is mostly black people. You get it? You have very few white people in the church. What do you think? <laughs> Amen. We would like to reach everyone, but not everyone, everyone receives it, believes in it, or likes it. You get it? So, when you sometimes see where God is opening their door, it's not, if somebody came and asked, why is it that you have only such type of people in your church? I said, ah, we preach to everyone, but these are the people who mind us. The rest don't mind us. Amen. Amen. So, when you see that God is using you in some particular people, you should just become stronger in that area. Amen. Amen. And just flow. Hallelujah. Amen. And not be worried about it. So don't be worried about it if you see that, oh, you don't see so many white people coming to the church or so many days or so many that. God has different areas. Paul said, look, me, my calling is to the gender. The Jews, when he preached, they wanted to kill him. <laughs> they tried to kill him. But the Gentiles, you get it, they received him. And he continued to go more and more and more to the Gentiles because they were receiving. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that there are many people that God is going to use you to speak to, to minister to, to be a blessing to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so you must open your heart. Amen. And when sometimes people who just like you see you preaching, and they say, you're just like me. You get it? You look just like me. And you are sharing the word of God with me. I'm really blessed. I would like to come. So open your heart and allow God to use you. Hallelujah. As a teacher to the Gentiles, as a minister to whoever your God is calling you to. Amen. God is opening us up. You see, He's causing us to be mixed up. Amen. Any of us are from West Africa or from Africa. We are mixed up like uh, fruit juice that has been mixed. Guava has been mixed with orange, has been mixed with apple, granadilla, mango. We are like mixed fruit juice. Yeah, that is how this church is. Amen. Amen. And God is going to use us. Are you glad that God is going to use you? Yes. You want God to use you? Yes. Amen. Because I tell you, white, white people to some that when they preach, black people don't enjoy it. Yeah, no, no, they don't enjoy the praise and the worship. Is that not so? The songs are different. And the, the way they dance is also different. Is that not so? <laughs> have different dances. And we are used to different kinds of dances. Amen. Amen. So allow the Lord to use you over here. Amen. Go to your own and Go to those who, you know, are open. And speak to them. Minister to them from your heart. Amen. Amen. You will never finish going around before Jesus comes. There's more room, more space, more land. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why, for instance, if we go to a place like Fiji, you get it, or a place like uh, Papua New Guinea, you see that there are people there who will listen to you. More than if you go to a place like New Zealand. Many of the people there will not want to hear what you have to say. Is that not so? Hallelujah. Let's carry on. And it says, I will therefore that the men everywhere, pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. How many want holy hands? How many have used your hands for bad things before? Mercy. Forgive. 
that your hands are going to be used as holy hands. Amen. Amen. Are you glad that your hands are now holy hands? Yes. Your hands are not going to be used for bad things. Huh? All right. In like manner. And you see, this is say, he's saying this to the man. He says, I will therefore that the man. But notice in verse 9, he says, in like manner also that the women. You understand? So, the characteristic about men is that they should pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Brothers in the church, your duty, your great duty, is to be spiritual. Do you see? You, you have to be more spiritual than the ladies. All the young men in this corner stand up. All these people here. Why are you people sitting at the back? Why have you chosen the back? Huh? Why have you chosen the back? (laughs) You can see more from the back. Come and sit here and see whether you can see me better. Come. Give him my chair. Can you see better? Yeah, try. <laughs> why? Why you sit at the back? Huh? Nothing. Okay. I want to sit here since there's nothing, no reason. Give me my books. I want my young men to be near me. You can, you can bring that here. Can you see me better? Mr. Benoni, why are you sitting over there? (laughs) You can receive more from the back. Why do you think so? (laughs) But you don't think it will be better from the front? Bring your chair, come and sit here. So this is what you are, you are Charles. Charles what? Guruma. And then you are Huh? In Chica. In Chica Kuruma. Alright. And this is Benoni McFory. Alright. So next your name is what? Samba what? McFory. Alright. So, why do you sit there? (laughs) You were eating. He's eating an apple. (laughs) All right. Pull a chair, come sit. Come and sit by Lady Pastor. Don't you think that you you get more from here? Huh? Yeah. You see, in in school, who are those who sit at the back? Who are in school? Bad boys. Naughty boys. Noisy boys. Those who don't pay attention. They are the ones who sit at the back. So when you come to church, do not have that spirit. Amen. Young man, what's your name? So this is Charles, this is Inchika, this is Benoni, and this is who? Samuel, prophet. And then you are? 
Nathaniel, why do you sit there? More space. There's no space. Are you sure, brother? There's space right here. Come and sit by your father over here. Can you see me better from here? Where's your Bible? You don't have one? Uh huh. You see, this are, you see, when you sit in front, then you, you can straight away straighten so many things. You get it? You need to have a Bible. You don't have to be at the back. Alright? It should be that if you are at the back, it's because there was nowhere. <laughs> All right. Then who is there? Shahil. Shahid. Got the Arabic names, but Shahid. Why are you sitting at the back? You like to meditate. On the back. No. Is this sleeping or meditating? Okay, Shahid, I'll show you a place to meditate. Bring your chair. Come. Come here. Let's park right here. No, not over there. Ah, okay. Amen. Don't you think you'll be more alert over here? Oh, yes. You see, let, let, let me tell you something. Uh, anyway, Brother uh, Godwin, why do you sit at the back? Why are they playing games? What sort of games? Well, you see now, who are those playing mobile phone games when we are preaching? Nathaniel. Who is Nathaniel? You are playing mobile phone games when we are preaching. Okay. Don't do that again, okay? All right. Chica, play mobile phone games when we are preaching. <laughs> Shahid, Shahid, come closer. Bring your chair here. Yeah. Amen. You see, when you sit in front, there are a whole lot of things that will be different. I remember one day I went to Tulsa. Uh -huh, who else? What else were they doing? You see, some of the things, they, they have meanings. A name has meaning. Where you sit, you may think it doesn't have any implication. But it has a meaning. You get it? And you find out that, like I remember one time I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. In a Higgins camp meeting. When I got there, I asked, you know, they, 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 uh, the place was full and they ushered me to the back uh, to upstairs so I told the man look do you, you, you know where I have come from 
I've come from very, very far. I have spent so many thousand dollars to buy a ticket to come here. I cannot go upstairs, far away. And the man looked at me. I said, yeah. And I, I met somebody who was from Romania or somewhere. He was an usher. And the man looked at me and said, I understand. So he said, I should wait. And I stayed at the end. I was able to get a seat just near the front. And every time when we came, they wanted to send us upstairs or whatever. There's no space. I forced myself to be there. You understand? Because I can't. I, I'm, I, why, I, I have come from far. I have not come. Do you see? To go and sit far away. I want to be near. I want to be blessed. The front is not a place for pastors. Or place, it's not a, a place for people who want to be near. Amen. So, brothers, you know, don't fall into a certain level or realm or way of doing things. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Bible says, I will therefore that the men, you see, play video games. I will therefore that the men sleep with all the girls in the church. I will therefore that the men smoke and drink. You see, men, brothers, have often not understood that it is not in physical strength that you are strong. I tell you, in real life, it's not physical strength that takes you far. You see, when you are young, you have that impression that, oh, if you do this, or if you, are, you have this, or you do this, or whatever, you are a great person. But as you go on in life, you realize that it is not that. But rather, if, you're, if you are serious in school, and you are a spiritual, it has a greater effect to bless you and to help you in your life than if you... Uh, you when I was in school, there were people who go and bring their, their father's cars to school. They would uh, uh, come and screech all around, turn the cars around, create a lot of dust, and everybody would be clapping for the hey, these are the wild guys. There were people who had different, different girlfriends. You know, and this one will come, he'll go to the girl's house, he'll come, come back, come and tell us, oh, he slept with this girl, he did that, he, he went and joined some tables together, he did this to the girl, and we'll be listening, ah, hey, hey. <laughs> we'll be very, very surprised. <laughs> you slept things, and we will be listening. It looks so great. Another guy will go and have some wild girlfriend, he'll steal the lubes in the, dorm, in the dormitory, go and sell them come back, some were smoking, some were smoking, weed, what do you call it here? Weed. Or we. Yeah, some were smoking weed. They look great, they look powerful. Some people look weak and useless. As the years have gone by, those who were doing all these things, where are they today? Me, I can employ my whole class. <laughs> yeah. I can give all of them jobs. Today. Today I can give them jobs. One day, I saw one of my classmates. When we were in school, he looked so powerful. Smoking. Smoking weed doing bad things. He said, yeah. And one day I met him in church. He came to ask me for money. You know. So I said, I'll go and drop you at home. He was going home. I'll, I'll, I'll drop you. As I sat in my car, put on my engine, put on the air conditioner in my car, put on the sound system, and he was sitting by me. And I'll take him to his house. When I got to where his house was, I already, I already I started to feel, feel sad. And I said, I wanted to go and see where he was staying. I tell you, when I got to his room, oh man, this is somebody I played with, somebody I was in the same school, the same class with. It, in Ghana, we have mosquitoes. I don't know if you have mosquitoes in where his room, there's no mosquito net open like that just one room and he was there 
the vagabond and I gave him 5,000 CDs. In fact, I felt so bad. 5,000 or 10,000 CDs, which is about one dollar. You know, and he was so happy. And he had no, nothing, no food, not even what to wear. He doesn't have. And I look at somebody I went to the same school with. Eh? I went to school with the best school. He, I know his parents and everything has become a useless person. Because some people feel that being a guy, you know, the macho man, yeah, I'm mean, smoking, tell my girlfriend, this, it's useless. It's nothing. Amen. I said, it's useless. It's nothing. It has, it has no importance at all. It's a deception. Sometimes even in the church, you come to church, you say, that spirit is among certain young men. And so let's sit at the back. So we, we are the guys, you know, we, we do this and that. And even instrumentalists in the church, sometimes you have people who play music. And they just feel so, Charlie, we they go bash. Do you understand when I say that? We they go bash. Yeah, we go bash. You are a born again Christian, you are playing instruments. We are not, we are good, we go bash. We know they go bash. We are going to worship the Lord. I used to be in a group where I was playing music with them. We were playing others. I played drums, I played keyboard, different guitar, and so on. Today, many of those people in the Christian group, they are not even in church. Some of them play music for secular bands. I saw one guy. One time he has now become an unbeliever musician. You see, I want you to know something that when you are a man, some of these things that look fashionable, it's like Charlie, yeah, this is it, this is it. They don't end anywhere. They are useless phantoms. Even in the church, you see the people. And I remember when we are praying, anytime we, let's say we are, we are praying, we are going to worship the Lord, then you see the musicians. It's like they, they they don't play they don't pray they are just playing something where people are playing then they also play then, okay now it's time to close so we just want to close closing prayer then you see them removing the cables when people are praying then they will be rolling cables instead of praying you get it gradually in the end you realize that you don't pray. You don't pray in church. You don't worship. They play the songs. They don't know the, any of the songs. They don't sing. Do you understand? They, they don't sing. It's okay. They don't sing. They don't play. Are you there? Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Where is this? Thing? Is that where it goes? Where does it go? Yeah. You get it? So you realize that they don't play. They don't pray. They don't worship. Musicians, what I'm saying, is it not true? You play that song, but you don't sing it. You don't know the worship song. You are just playing something. So you are not a worshiper. You get it? You sit at the back. You are playing video games, mobile phone games. You don't read your Bible. You don't write notes. When they say, let us pray, you don't pray. Meanwhile, the Bible is saying, I will therefore that the man, if you are a man, a man is not shown by uh, 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 what? Yeah. Your genital organs. That's not what makes you a man. The Bible is saying that I want the men to be prayerful. Let them lift up holy hands and pray. You are deceived. You are deceived. That's not what makes you. And you see that when you see a, a spiritual person, it is, you are far safer with a spiritual person than, than somebody who is just carnal. Ladies, is it not true? Huh? Don't you feel that you are safer? You are, you are safer to be with a spiritual person than to be with somebody who is just carnal. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So God wants to show men what is it that makes you a real man? Amen. Look at me. If you look at me, you look at my life, you see I have people eh, who are even older than me. I have become their father. 
Yeah. I become their father. I become strong, spiritual, financially solid. You get it? In life, so many things. It's to almost in all areas. It comes from being a spiritual person. And not like being there and it's like, well, my children, this is my girlfriend, this is like smoking, doing whatever. Those are just useless. They are the things of a useless mind. A mind that is very small. Small mind. What is that? You take your father's car, you go and screech around. You steal louvers. Eh? You go and follow girls. Do this, sleep with this, sleep with that, sleep with that. And say, what is it? What is it? It's not any manhood. Lord, that's what I want to see about the men in this church. I say, that's what I want to see about the men in this church. Amen. That's what I want to see about the men in this church. Amen. And they are lifting up holy hands and they are praying and they are prayerful. Young man, what do you think? Can you do that? Is it easy? Is it possible? Yeah. Hmm? Or you want the rod of life? To lash you. Huh? Look at me. I'm, I'm looking at you. You don't want to look at me. I'm talking to you. Look into my eyes. I'm looking into your eyes. Uh -huh. huh? You don't want the rod of life. The rod of life to whip you. No. Hear the word of God today. There were two sons. Be one of the good sons. Don't be the bad son in the story. There is always a bad son. But be the good son. Amen. Tell somebody, be the good son. Be the good son. Samuel, be the good son. See the instrumentalist, there will always be the good one and the bad one. You be the good one. Amen. Be the good one. God is raising up to be the good one. Amen. Ichika, be the good one. Instrumentalist, there's good, there's bad. Be the good one. There are people who are going to use... So look, there are people who are going to use these instruments you are playing. They are going to use it for foolish things. To play in bands, pubs, nightclubs. Then you go and play and then you play it more, they give you money. Is it not so? It's not worth it. I said it's not worth it. Don't use it. Don't use your body. Don't use your, your talent. For the devil. I know what I'm saying. No. All these things I'm saying, I'm not here with you, but God is speaking to you clearly. How many realize that God is speaking clearly? Huh? Very clearly. You don't need any, I'm not speaking to you mysteries. I'm telling you real things. Man, it's not anything great to be there without being married and just having whatever. Girlfriends. It's, it's higher to be married. Higher. Don't think that just being there and just walking around with me, I don't easily marry with me, I don't, you know, girls, you know, I, whatever. Meanwhile, you are having one after the other. It's not noble. Be spiritual. Yeah. Amen. Put your hands together for these two. Further information on Bishop Hayward Mills books, tapes, CDs, and DVDs, please write to Vision Bookshop, PO Box KB114, Kolebu, Accra, Ghana, or call 021-249-871. That's 021-249-871. Email Vision Bookshop at darkwoodmills.org. God richly bless you.